This land is owned by relatively few people, but there are over one million Guatemalans who are landless peasants. They would like to be able to feed themselves instead of sending sugar, cotton, and beef to compete with the American farmer. The country here needs exports, but at the expense of the very people that provide the basis for the ever-increasing tourist trade. Several years ago, a present high government official suggested that all Indian males be sterilized to get rid of what he called the Indian problem. Their wives would be impregnated by the non-Indians to improve the race with Spanish blood. But then this would ruin the native or primitive aspect of the lure of tourism. Therefore, man's inhumanity to man. Uh, he was really identified with the poor and the cause of the poor, and he was critical probably of human rights violations by the military government, and so that Absolutely. got him on the death list. Yeah, and the other thing that was so important to me was he was a young man. I only found these details out later. A young man who really had some trouble with his theological studies, the learning of Latin, the other parts. And yet when he went to um, Santiago Atitlán and the surrounding area, he not only learned Spanish, he also learned the language of the people. There were so many languages in uh, Guatemala this was a tribal language. And then actually went into the translation of the New Testament into that language. So in spite of the academic difficulties he had in seminary, he ended up doing a brilliant work of providing the New Testament in the language of the people so it could be preached, he learned how to speak their language. And it's I understand, I'm not that kind of a linguist, I understand that he was quite fluent in it and that it was seen as a tremendous loving gesture on his part to learn that language and then to do something with it so that they would have a tool for their own Christian faith. He was an ordinary person from a small town farming family. He was born during the Depression. I'm sure he was formed from what it took to make a farm go in Oklahoma during the Dust Bowl. An anonymous hate sheet, or vomit sheet, like someone said, made its debut a few Sundays ago. The mayor, the school director, Teachers and anybody of importance in town made the list. I was number eight and Father Adan number nine. It was interesting to see just how much information they had. Some of it misjudged, half-truths, and just outright lies. The political situation here is really sad. Guatemala is systematically doing away with all liberals or even moderates in government, as well as labor leaders, and apparently there are lots of kidnappings that never get in the papers. There are something like 15 bodies that show up every day in the country and show signs of torture and then shot. I haven't received any threats as such, but if anything happens, that is the way it's supposed to be. I don't intend to run from danger, but at the same time, I don't intend to unnecessarily put myself into danger. I want to live like anyone else. What I have told you here is just for you, not to say any of this to the folks. We just need the help of God to do our work well, and to be able to take it if the time comes 
that we are asked to suffer for him. Now, Bill, I'd like to ask you to comment about the U.S. connection to all this, the U.S. connection to repression in Guatemala and uh, the dictatorship. Uh, in 1954, the CIA was involved in a coup against the democratically elected president of Guatemala, Arbenz. And I think ever since then, there was escalating U.S. military and political support for the military dictatorships in that country. I'm just wondering if you can elaborate on that a little bit or even put that in the context of the rest of Central America and South America, which you know so well from your work with the National Council of Churches. I think that um, the period just prior to this period of the 80s, which I, I think really it all began in the middle of the 50s and then went on from there uh, with largely dictators who had military backgrounds being the ones supported uh, in both their coups and then in their uh, ruling in, each, in all of the countries of Central America, in many of the countries of the so uh, South America. What was so embarrassing for me as a pastor and an American citizen working in these areas was always the fact that there were so many military trainers supposedly never carried guns. They were only there to improve the, the uh, military. And improvement meant making them, in a very real sense, more effective in the repression. And this was true in every country except Costa Rica, the, the one country that was saved from military uh, rule was Costa Rica. Yes, being trained by the United States, but the tragedy was being more effective in the repression. That was the vision that was constantly present. And I think that Stanley Rother um, was sensitive to that. I think he was sensitive to the presence of uh, that kind of repression in Guatemala, but in neighboring countries as well. That was part of our discussion. The political situation here and elsewhere in the world is something else. There were killings by the police and army in the Spanish embassy in Guatemala City. On the coast here, fields are being burned. Strikes at sugar mills, buildings and equipment on the fincas, that is, farms, being destroyed. Even trucks loaded with cotton bales being stopped and burned. All traffic is stopped and searched at strategic points. Everyone blames everyone else, and the tension builds. More killings, repression. Don't know when it will all stop. It will get worse before it gets better. He had been preaching um, and teaching and engaged with the impoverished, with the farmers, with the peasants, the, and, and the landowners, the people of power and wealth, were very bothered by that, 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 a, that a priest was not first related to them, that a priest was not doing what their wishes were um, and was interfering with, you know, the kind of slavery that comes from mm -hmm. impoverishment. The status quo. The status, the status quo. quo um, the uh, ease of paying people 50 cents a day for a hard day's labor. That kind of thing, I think, was part of his preaching. Maybe not direct attacks on anybody of power, but the support of the victims of, of, of those attacks. Mm 
And I think that that was a piece of what was in his heart and his mind. Uh, there, it, it, there are clear records of some of his sermons and, and some of the things that he did say, the types of organizations that he created, uh, cooperatives and, and, and peasants' organizations. And each time they, they would be created, there would be some reasoning in regard to strengthening them in the face of the repression that came from the rich, from the landed oligarchy, and then sadly from this enormous army that was being supported so heavily by American military uh, aid, they called it aid, it was direct investment in the military, and the presence of trainers who made the military so much more effective in their killing of the poor and of the peasants. There was another priest killed to the north of us in Quiche while I was gone. That makes three since the 1st of May. One was kidnapped, presumed dead. And what do we do about all this? What can we do but do our work? Keep our heads down, preach the gospel of love and nonviolence, etc. We can show people the way. But if they are hell-bent on a collision course with the powers that be, then there is little that my preaching will change, if at all. I was uh, very moved to see the number of martyrs that, within the life of the church, the churches actually, uh, throughout Latin America, during the 20 year period of uh, the 70s and the 80s. The martyr list is enormous, and I believe that it's, it's a measure of the church's authenticity in preaching the gospel uh, that led to those numbers being so high for the churches because it was in clear contradiction of a system that was, uh, uh, I'm embarrassed to say it and repeat it, a system that was nurtured to such a heavy degree by the investment from the United States. And that was at every level. It was the investment in the oligarchy because of the way in which funds came in to support that part of society. It was an investment in the military, making them terribly efficient and heavily armed in spite of what they were doing to the citizenry, and which made, the, in a very real sense, um, nations that have had this wonderful history of Christian Catholic uh, education and teaching and, and the presence of the church, making those nations into um, nations that sacrificed a large part of the believing population, people who lived their faith. The country here is in rebellion, and the government is taking it out on the church. The low wages that are paid, the very few who are excessively rich, the bad distribution of land, these are some of the reasons for the widespread discontent.
The church seems to be the only force that is trying to do something about the situation, and therefore the government is after us. Now, there's that phrase that uh, I think is very telling, that U.S. foreign policy largely has been based over the decades on making the world or keeping the world or keeping Latin America safe for U.S. investment. That's right. I think that's a large part of U.S. reasoning and motivation. The world to prevent any kind of socialist movement because that would uh, not be an environment favorable to unlimited and untrammeled uh, U.S. exploitation and investment. I, I think that that, that combination, that uh, of capital and of military might um, really expressed itself uh, from the 1954, that first coup in Guatemala, when it, which was a CIA developed and run from outside of Guatemala completely to overthrow uh, a democratically elected individual a president. That, those were the seeds. The next big entry of seeds was the Brazilian coup in 1964, ten years later, uh, when uh, a succession was interrupted by military. Uh, then Chile, I mean if, you, if you're looking, it's 1973, ten years later, in Chile, um, when Salvador Allende was overthrown by the military and we had some of the worst examples, uh, horrendous examples of torture and disappearance, that sort of thing. Yeah.